Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I've got three cards to share with you that I created using the Spellbinders May 2019 Large Die Kit of the Month. Just giving you a quick look here at what was included. So for this first card, I'm going to create a wedding cake and I've gone ahead and trimmed out a bunch of the large and small flowers. The larger are cut from Paper Tray Ink Berry Sorbet and the smaller from Sweet Blush. So I'm just going to take my bloom tool here and go ahead and just, I just do that in a circular motion and it just sort of cups the flower to make it look a little more realistic. For the leaves here, I'm just taking the smaller of the two ends of that bloom tool and running that right down the vein in the center and that just gives it a little bit of texture as well. Uh, the colors I used for the leaves are Jelly Bean Green from MFT and Simply Chartreuse from Paper Tray Ink. There I'm showing you how I cut out the cake. I've used uh, MFT's whipped cream for that. And I did use the insert so that I would get that really pretty lacy design on the inside, but I didn't want my background pattern paper to show through. So I've also trimmed down two smaller pieces that I'm gonna glue on the inside so that I'll get that texture, but you won't be able to see through it. For my card base, I'm again using Berry Sorbet from Paper Tray Ink, and I've also grabbed some pattern paper from My Mind's Eye. This is from the Fancy That 6x6 pattern paper. So here I'm just placing some very tiny dots of glue all around that pattern. And then I've trimmed down these background pieces to just slightly smaller than that portion between the two folded edges. So I wanted to get that curve of the pop-up there into these pieces, so I'm just sort of rolling those around on my finger, just getting a little bit of curl there, doing my best not to actually bend the cardstock. It is pretty thick since it's double layered. I did find as I was going through working with these, it was a little easier to actually use my bone folder and just run that very slowly again to add that curl to both of the pieces of the cake. So I am gonna go ahead and decorate this up with my flowers, but I wanted to add sort of a ribbon around that bottom of that top layer just to sort of help delineate the two layers and then also that gave me a nice base to place my flowers off of. So I'm just gluing that right along the bottom, making sure that both edges are flush together. And then I went ahead and just folded those over to add the little bit of extra tabs. Here I'm going to add some 8th inch score tape along all four of these folded over edges. Add a little bit on that pink ribbon as well. And then putting these down was a little bit tricky because I wanted to put them down with a curve. Um, but you also want the card to be able to go flat when it goes inside the envelope. So what I ended up doing and the first time here I sort of messed around with this a little bit. I've just got it centered here and I placed it with the curve in it how I wanted it to be and then from there I'm going to press down in the middle and sort of push out. Just make sure that's stuck down nice and tight and that way it does sort of pop up. It's not a huge amount of dimension but it does give it that little bit of distinction from the background and I definitely would recommend curling the paper like I did before you place it down because I think that helped a lot 
in making sure that it does actually pop up off the card. For this top layer, I'm gonna slide it down inside just ever so slightly, just to make sure that you can't see through the two layers and then place that down exactly the same way. Then here I'm just taking my bone folder and going down underneath them to again add in that little bit of a curve. Then to finish everything up, I'm gonna go ahead and place down my flowers and some leaves around those. Once I had that finished, I wanted to add a little bit more bling. So I've grabbed some of these diamonds from my stash. I think I picked these up at Joann's, but I've had them for a long time, so I'm not quite sure. The nice thing about them is that even though they are individual crystals, they are sort of all together on a string. So you can just pull off the amount that you need, um, but you don't have to place down each one individually. Here for the inside of the card, I'm using a sentiment from the Simon Says Stamp Congratulations stamp set. This is one of my favorites for wedding cards. It reads, wishing you lots of happily ever after. I'm on my trusty Nina panel, trim two, four by five and a quarter, and I'm gonna stamp that out using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I'll go ahead here, add some ATG to the back of that, and place that on the inside of my card base. And that will complete card number one. So here for card number two, I'm gonna create a birthday card and I'm just gonna use that larger bottom layer to create a one layer cake. I wanted to have some of those sparklers coming up off the top of it. Uh, so I went ahead and just left this solid. Here I've grabbed a piece of black licorice cardstock, trimmed that to about a quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna use some eighth inch score tape to attach that along the bottom here. Trim off that excess. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold over my edges on that score line there. I'm just adding a little score line to the black portion at the bottom. I 
I wanted to make sure that was flush and it was just slightly uneven, so I'm just gonna trim off a hair along the bottom here. And then again, I'm gonna go ahead and curl this with my fingers just to get that pop-up started. And I'll add some eighth inch score tape along those two fold over tabs. I have used those sticks or candles that were included and I just wanted the 40 for on the front of the cake so I actually just took my scissors and trimmed off that bottom portion. Here I'm going to use my ruler to make sure I can get this nice and lined up and I'll add a little bit of art glitter glue behind both and then place those down in the center of the cake. I'll go ahead and peel off the backing here and place my cake on top of the card base. This card base is made from MFT's Steel Gray. Just making sure that's nice and centered. And then I'm gonna place down the stems for my sparklers. So I have trimmed these out of black. This is actually a black pattern paper. Uh, it was the back side of one of those fancy that pattern pages. So I just used the black portion for these stems here. And then I pulled from my stash some gold glitter paper. I believe this is die cuts with a view and I trimmed out those uh, little sparklers for the top here. Next, I'm gonna finish this up with some more flowers. This time for the larger flowers, I'm using MFT Bubblegum, and the other colors are the same as from the last card. For the inside here, I'm going to use my Simon Says Stamp Birthday Bit Stamp Set going with this one that says Birthday Wishes. I love this font. It's one of my favorite birthday stamps to use. It has been discontinued, but if you check, you can find some on eBay. Again, stamping that out using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I have trimmed off a piece of that MFT bubblegum cardstock, about a quarter of an inch, added some score tape to the back of that, and I'm gonna place that here along the bottom of the panel. Go ahead and trim off that excess. Then I decided I needed a little something more on the front of the card, so I've grabbed that bubblegum cardstock and stamped out the sentiment, let's celebrate. This is also included in that birthday bit stamp set. And then I trimmed that into a little banner edge there, and I've added in some of that same gold glitter paper, as well as a thin stripe of the whipped cream uh, from MFT. I'm just gonna layer those together here to add a little banner coming down off to the side of my cake.
I'll go ahead and place that down and then again trim off the excess. There you can see I've already added my inside panel and that will complete card number two. So here for card number three, I wanted to try something a little different and I'm gonna create some shaker windows out of each of the two layers of the cake. So I trimmed out both size layers twice from some vellum and here I'm gonna add some eighth inch score tape all the way around. So I'm gonna start out here by adding this across the top and bottom. That way when I peel away the tape, I'm gonna be able to place down the side edges and it's gonna give me a complete closed box. Now here I'm going to add in my sequins and these are just random sequins. I think both are actually left over from some very old uh, paper pumpkin kits. So for this section, I added in the sequins before I peeled away the score tape. And because there wasn't a lot for me to grab onto, this was really difficult. I kept having the sequins run into the tape and having to move them around and take them off and it, it took quite a bit of time. Um, so you'll see with the next layer I do this a little bit differently, but I wanted to leave it in so you could see uh, why I changed up what I was doing and, and which way it works best. So once I finally get this last layer of the score tape peeled off and I kept fixing it in between, I don't know why I was doing that because every time I peeled away another layer, I had to do the same thing over again. Um, so there you can see I've got that second layer and I'm just going to place that down right on top and that will close all of my sequins in between the two. So for this larger layer you're going to see I set everything up the same going across the inside of those two tabs, top and bottom. And then I'll fold the tabs in and add on the outside going across both of the sides. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and peel away all of my score tape at the same time. And then I'll go ahead and add my sequins in the middle. It was much easier doing it this way. And then again, I'll go ahead and take the other side and place that down right on top. Here I've trimmed out a background to four by five and a quarter, again using some paper from that fancy that six by six paper pad. I've trimmed off some black licorice cardstock and added that along the bottom of both layers, just about a quarter of an inch there. I decided I wanted to add a little bow across that top layer, so I'm going to add just a tiny bit of score tape behind another strip of that same black cardstock. And then I'm just going to sort of curl this cardstock around. I wanted to make sure I didn't get any folds, so I'm sorry I'm a little bit out of the view of the camera there, but I'm just taking 
my fingers and running that and just adding some curl the whole way down this cardstock. And then I'm gonna fold that over, just making sort of a loop that I'm gonna pinch in the middle. And that's gonna create the two loops of my bow. And then I'll take this smaller piece that I've added the score tape to and I'm gonna wrap that right around the center. That will hold everything closed. And I'm just going to sort of fluff up the ends of my bow. And then I'll add a dot of my art glitter glue and place that down right on top of the ribbon. So it's a little hard to see on camera, but in person it does give some really nice texture and dimension. Now I wanted to add some glue behind my layers that was not going to stand out too much. So I'm going to use some of my mini glue dots. I added some on each corner and placed down both of the layers. So of course I'm going to top this off with some more flowers and this is a mix of the leftover flowers from the previous two cards. Now at this point I decided I wanted a little something more on the front so I'm again grabbing from that congratulations stamp set and I'm going to stamp out Mr. and Mrs. again using my VersaFine Onyx black ink. And then here I wanted to add a little bit more dimension to those flowers so I decided I would double them up just adding a little dot of glue and placing one flower on top of the other but sort of turning it so that you could see all of the petals. For the inside, I'm again on a Nina panel trimmed to four by five and a quarter, and I've grabbed this large congratulations stamp, again using my Onyx Black ink. I'll add some ATG to the back of that. And place that on the inside of my card base. And that will complete card number three. Here are a few close-ups of the finished cards. In the description box below, you'll find my blog post, which has additional photos and links to the supplies I used. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment or a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.